I'm using the table, whatever. Because these tables are actually movable. So, like, yeah. Everyone's ready. I think. No, what she was going to try to do is guy that wants to switch to a different time and take the shoe. Oh, that's right. There you have it. Are you T? Are you, oh, you're going to do the same thing? No, it's only one. We're Tuesday. He's Friday. Well, we'll let you know how it goes, I guess. There you go. Huh. Are you doing the health, the health sciences one? No. Oh. I couldn't do any of those things. So I just have one for you. The way Osmond was saying it sounded like hey, you had to be a female. No. Why? Years. Yeah. So last year, so I, like, I got like burned okay? on Title IX stuff or whatever. Like, oh yeah, you took us over. Right? Like, like, has to yeah, five answer. years ago. Yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. Sure. When I'm saying so five years, today. I mean, oh, you're doing it today. And so his idea was like all freshman female class. And I was like reading because I'm like super easy. But I don't know how long I can teach it. I mean, I understand how sciences are predominantly female, but it does not mean it's only females in there. What about that one lone uh, male nurse? I was like. Is he the best title in there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't taken my class for like two years. Here's the tutoring facility. The only downside to the room? No whiteboard, excuse me? I don't know. We'll, we'll try several, several options. And then, if I have some secret writing, I, I can put it in. <laughs> <laughs> the test Is answers. Huh? The answers to yeah. the test. Yeah. Oh. Something like this, yes. No, that's what? Minnesota? P O L E N S K Y? A N or E N? Because I'm in English. Yeah. I know there's a few different ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for coming again and uh, not stopping your physical chemistry on the last time meeting. So, who we are and what are, are we doing? So, I, I do that is still a physical chemistry class. And uh, where did we stop last time? On uh, coming here and getting general ideas what is the what are the objectives of, of the class, which would be something like getting principles for electrons and ions moving in uh, molecules and staying together for stability and physical properties. And the motion of electrons doesn't follow our intuitive expectations from a uh, macroscopic world. Therefore, we need to look in more details on uh, principles, how, how the electrons are moving in molecules and what is going on. Okay. And some of you have prompted me that there is a duality, that photons and electrons share properties of particle and a wave. So in order to be able to tell something about electrons on more quantitative way, we need to be able to speak about waves and wave processes on a math language. So we need to uh, recall, develop, or uh, find out how to deal with waves. They're more, more challenging than uh, regular like point charges or like um, 
objects in our macroscopic, typical objects in macroscopic world. So the, um, we will cover some basic ideas for any wave and then we will go uh, deeper into, into vectors. So what is a wave? Just some, do, do not hesitate. It's not, uh, um, I don't know if that's a good question, but it has like typically a amplitude and like some kind of frequency. You are speaking about harmonic wave, but uh, uh, the wave doesn't need to be harmonic. So the most typical answer that uh, comes out at this question, everyone is uh, hesitant to speak something out, to be caught on, on being wrong, and therefore... <laughs> any, any other definitions? An oscillating form of energy. One can imagine a wave with constant energy. Um, but something is oscillating. So, what about throwing um, count in the last episode of Game of Thrones, throwing stones at, at drifts, and uh, one of the stones was falling down on, on ice. But if uh, there would be no ice, there would be like water, what happens if stone falls into water? Huh? Ripples. Yes, and they are also waves. And you cannot exactly tell what are their frequency or wavelengths, right? But something wave in nature is going on, right? Mm -hmm. So we are coming to thinking or defining what it is. So, some of you have told the word oscillation, so it is something developing in time. But also, it is something distributed in space. So a wave is something that connects space and time. So um, one of the definitions or one of the uh, possible ways to speak about waves by several options. I'll try first here from the screen, maybe it will work better. So you see, uh, if we do have some distribution in space, like think about one dimensional, do you see it well? Maybe you can use this finger all the time. And then after some delay of time, we have the function with the same symbol, like, uh, but the structure will be repeated at some elongation. Time and axis position. So same function. So if you if you have some crazy distribution in space, and after some time it travels and reproduces the same shape. but at different location. So perturbation of something, we are not yet specific. For example, it could be surface of, of uh, whatever, lake or swimming pool, and the shape is repeated. This is a good definition of wave on mathematical language. So a function that is repeated after some times in the same shape and at a little uh, Offset. So if we accept this, um, if you accept I see one can finger something there. When, when there will be time for presentations, you, you will be able to practice same, uh, to enjoy the same technology. So, so if you accept this uh, type of mathematical definition, 
how would you discriminate between waves traveling in different directions? Like wave can go left or right? Change what the minus to a plus on the Yes, time. yes. So you can have left and right wave or forward and back. Good, good. Now you are certified experts in waves. <laughs> but we have a few other things to do. When you, you did right, the easiest thing while talking to the waves is uh, something periodic, something harmonic, which is much easier than waves of arbitrary shapes. And in most of applications, one speaks of harmonic waves. If you if you are not dealing with um, explosives, shock waves, which are exotic, <laughs> to uh, the majority of the waves that we consider will be some sort of periodic or harmonic. So then you design a function that will repeat itself if you if you are offset either in space or in time. Maybe you can even tell it as a, as a definition. So periodically repeats itself. Well, if it will be too hard, I will go to the old technology. And periodic means repeating the same shape. One of the examples is uh, trigonometric functions, right? I do not have a language to explain it. It, it, it seems evident, but we need to pronounce it together. So like if you draw, um, some of you told that there is an amplitude, frequency, and if it is a wave periodic in space, then one can measure that if it is periodic, then there is a period. Distance between repeating units. How would you call it? Periodic? No. Okay. So if there is a length of wave, <laughs> <laughs> so for this lambda, what would you call? Wave like this. <laughs> if it is, if something repeat, repeats, um, Yeah, we should we should <laughs> we shouldn't dance here. <laughs> but I don't know. There is no fifth law. But maybe there are some perturbations. <laughs> perturbations, or I don't know. Maybe martial arts class. <laughs> Take part. <laughs> so, if it is periodic in time, then between the same instances, like the harmonic function comes to the same amplitude, we can. Stopwatch time between this periodic events, and then you can call it. You can call it a period. Yes. <laughs> but then we can stick it um, this harmonic function with two types of argument into the same functional form as we collectively designed as a group of uh, intellectual activity people on the last slide. So function repeats itself if there is an offset in time and in space. So we, we uh, set up this function as a sign of argument that uh, shows us shift in uh, space and string that gives us shift in time. Right now, we did a very important thing, but intellectually it doesn't go beyond uh, high school program. Uh, we, will, we will develop a little bit further, I promise. So 
what is what is the the goal? Well, I know the goal is to, for me to uh, finish the class and uh, get more free time for you to get great and also get more free time. But locally, right now, if we need mathematical laws for motion of electrons, and we before we go into this, we need some principles to describing wave wave motion. What uh, can we always tell? Hey, our electron is cosine. I'm not sure if you can tell it in public. Even if uh, sometimes it could be correct in very limited cases, but you cannot do this way. It will be very non-general. So uh, typically, this the wave is a solution, but one needs something that generates them. A wave generator in mathematical sense. So function. Huh? Function. No, function is a wave, but ge not generating function. It's a, it's a different chapter. Typically, the functions come out of solutions of differential equations. So we need some equation by solving which we will get a wave type of solution. Um, we are not in math department. We are not in math class, so we, we should go relatively easy without too much uh, stress. But some minimal effort cannot be avoided. So we are going to, we are not going to derive, but we are going to guess an equation that will generate waves as its solution. Objections? Uh, motivation is clear? Okay, so we will uh, guess such equation by, uh, and we are not going to solve it ourselves for most of the cases, but we will, and we will not make the rigorous proof, but we will try to make it a um, clear case, come to such level that no one objects or no one tells that uh, I suspect you will not. So, in order to come up with an idea of what could be the, let me write it down, to be the goal is equation. And if it will be equation to generate waves, it will be wave equation. So in order to come up with this idea, we will do two mathematical experiments. So one mathematical experiment, I know you didn't came here to study math, but it is so simple and um, enjoyable that maybe you will forgive me. So what if two waves are colliding? What is going on? What, what, what do you expect to happen? One of two things, constructive or destructive processes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's that's so correct that even poor. <laughs> I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting some wrong answer that would uh, sound exciting, like a wave would scatter from each other and go in the opposite direction. <laughs> so, will the suppose we have localized waves, not as a, as a infinite period function, but like short wave packet, train. Two of them collide. And what will happen after they pass? Will they change or, or not? So some of you promised that they will not change. And, and it is again so so right to <laughs> conform. Um, there is a, in a basic wave processes, there is a well-believed principle of superposition, which means if you add together several waves, they just are constructed or destructively added, but they do not affect each other. So there are, there are no non-linear phenomena, it's all, all linear. And we are going to, to make this experiment by adding together two waves that travel opposite directions, by having different signs in their arguments. How do we do it? Hmm. 
mathematically. How would we add to the science? Use the trig identity. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I can <laughs> teach you, but I don't. Uh, uh, let me guess and then look into the cheat sheet. But maybe some of you were studying well in other classes and can uh, can guess it like, well. <laughs> so, um, it's like the cosine of the first one minus the second one or something. No, I don't remember. <laughs> like um, I'm so lazy that I would die to rewrite this cosine and all these arguments. Let's um, write down as. Oh, huh? <laughs> 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 I'm not guilty. It's, it's a technology. If it will fail, I will write here, but it's so impressive to. Where this alpha and beta are those um, time and space? I think. I can blow my phone. Dang it. Okay. It's at home. Start working in the math before I write up the cheat sheet I can just look at. <laughs> Probably one can recall equations for. For those expressions separately and then add them together. So I will do my best guess. Alpha plus beta could be. And later, if you need it in class, I do have algorithm how to rewrite these equations. I, uh, I cannot recall anything, but I know how to rewrite it in 10 minutes, which we don't have now. Therefore, I'm guessing. <laughs> so cosine alpha times cosine beta plus sine alpha times sine beta and cosine alpha minus beta will be cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta and if I'm not wrong by adding these two together one will get the addition of two cosines on the left then, and on the right these two terms we will repeat because they are the same. Two cosine alpha cosine beta. And these two cancel because they have opposite sign. Does it sound legitimate to you? Well, I found the correct one. <laughs> how, uh, how, uh, how wrong am I? Uh, well, it should be, let's see, two times the cosine of. Let's see, wait, how are you starting this? Because the alpha and beta are different here, I think, between what you got and what they've got. Well, um, but yeah, yeah, that's more or less correct, because it's the cosine alpha plus cosine beta is two cosine alpha plus beta over two times huh? the cosine huh? alpha minus beta over two. At least that's what this is. So, um, what I'm um, oh, worrying about, are there here yeah. both cosines or there are two different functions? Uh, they're definitely both cosines. Okay, so... Um, If you find any mistakes in the lecture, uh, write it down, bring it, and you will get it separate. <laughs> so let's put it in constructive way. Oh, okay, what do I have in my... Either I was wrong by preparing cheat sheet, or I, I was... Well, it was consistent. Either mistake here and there, or correct here and there. So if we plug in into this uh, shorthand notation, our two colliding waves, instead of summation of two waves, we're going to get product of two waves. waves. So cosine of this uh, space part and cosine of this time part. What does it mean? How do we interpret it? Now we're coming again back into um, high school program in science. Like B wave in this form was a running wave. This uh, maximum and minimum were traveling one way or another. Way. 
that when they collide, you do not have difference, you, you have product, which means we do have this time, uh, the space dependent part, but the time dependent part serves as its amplitude. So the same shape, just changing lower or higher. We have uh, the shape corresponding to the um, spatial part, but at max time it will be a little lower amplitude, then a little lower amplitude, and then it will get negative amplitude. Right? No objections. This will be our F capital X and T, and this will be X. So you will see that, uh, well, here zero is here. You will see that there are points that will have always zero amplitude, and there will be points where the amplitude is changing. So let us this way travel anywhere. Well, um, can we tell that this wave is, a, can we name it as traveling wave? It's not the best name because it, it looks like standing somewhere. If it is standing, then how do you call this way? Standing way, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Good. Um, what else? I want to believe. I just say don't mind to me. So writing long equations is always boring. Why don't we call the spatial part as x capital and uh, time resolved part as t capital? Just if uh, I have another attack of laziness, I will use this uh, notation instead of um, writing long equations. So this will be x capital, this will be t. How are we doing this time? I'm not yet in the... Okay, good. So, same thing we already covered. So by looking different fractions of period, we will get different amplitudes, and there are other points. Excellent. We are done with mathematical experiment number one. Who we are and what we are doing. We are trying to come up with well-argumented, although not rigorous, derivation of an equation that will generate waves. And we will come to this equation by making two numerical experiments. First was to explore superposition that sets up, up a bridge between traveling waves and standing waves. And second experiment will be to uh, practice derivatives. Why? Because differential equations always have derivatives. We have a big hope that derivatives help us to solve everything. Oh, it's answer. No, no, I should hide it. Probably I will, I will do something here and then uh, open the cheat sheet. So, we are going to practice, well, I'm going to practice, you probably will just glance and even uh, have no, uh, no notes or no report, but you're always welcome to take notes. Um, so, we are going to practice derivatives over time and space of this standing wave. And... Um, there are expectations that we will come up with some um, really good, which I don't want to block the view, really helpful conclusions. So, our function is product of space. 
space and time part. And we are going to practice four derivatives. First derivative over space, second derivative over space, first derivative over time, second derivative over time. And when we complete this exercise, or when I complete this exercise, um, should I invite someone to the board or let's have an easy Friday? Next time. Uh, oh, it's too easy for you guys. You can do something more complicated. I, I'll do easy task myself. So um, after we are done with these four derivatives, we look on them and um, we will have an insight. We will immediately figure out the differential equation that will generate function, uh, wave uh, solution. So first derivative over x. So the time dependence, time dependent part is not affected, so this derivative will be applied only to the uh, part that depends on space. G, 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 what do we do if the argument doesn't coincide with variable. I think you place it on front. Right? And what is the derivative of cosine? Plus or minus? Negative. Huh? Negative, negative. I, I'm with you. Yes, yes. Again, so correct. <laughs> so we repeat this t capital. We migrate this 2 pi over lambda to the front. And then we have minus sine of the same argument. 2 pi x over, over lambda. No errors. Finding errors gives you extra credit. Now, let's do the second derivative. Squared f, which means we repeat things that are not space dependent. P pi lambda t capital, which is function of t, and then we do d dx of minus sine p pi x over lambda. What is the derivative of sine? Plus or minus? Plus. Plus. Well, plus. plus. We, we keep the minus from our previous history. And again, uh, this factor will come up front as once again. Right? So we will have 2 pi over lambda squared. We have time dependent part. And we have minus cosine 2 pi x over lambda. No errors detected? Not yet. I'll do, I'll do a lot of errors, I promise, even involuntarily. Will you see this line? So if, if I read up, 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 uh, until this line, everyone is right? Okay, probably I do. So this was space. Now we need to focus on time. Time, time. What is time? Okay, we still have about 15 seconds. So g dt of f. Now we will have spatial part untouched, and we apply d dt to the this t capital function, which depends on time. Sine two pi time divided by period. Um, I'm not good in notations. Probably we should call this tau t 
need to be different from the function. Okay. And we practice the same the same thing. The factor comes up front e l over l times space spatial part, and then we do have minus sine of this q by t divided by q. Right? Very pure analogy. Now we practice second derivative. So we just apply second derivative to this expression, which means whatever we got there can be kept in front. So it is not a big discovery, but see how, how, how nice if you apply derivative over uh, second variable, the part that depends on first variable stays unchanged. And it is connected for all problems that are linear in nature. It's uh, this principles of, of superposition and separation of variables um, will come up onto your radar if you didn't yet. D dt of what? Of minus sine e pi t over l. So derivative of sine is cosine and we keep the minus minus sign. And we also have this thing once again. So t pi over lambda squared x. Sine t pi t over q. Let's look on these two expressions. So we have done uh, torture of our young brains uh, for technical issues, and now we will play highly intellectual observer observators. So what do you observe if you look on, on these two expressions? How different or how close are they from each other? What is common and what is different? Okay, easier thing. What is common? Do not hesitate. It's uh, any anything you tell can work only towards your benefits. There is no punishment for anything. Negative cosine. Yes. So the non-trivial functional form is. Uh... Double checking for two. Ah. Is that supposed to be a tau? Tau. Yeah. Instead of lambda. On the. Far left of that bottom equation. Yes, you are correct. Plus one point. I need to learn your names and <laughs> make a little table. I'll put that <coughs> the correction. I just want to make sure. <laughs> good, good, thank you. Um, maybe it is too early to compare. Maybe we want to plug in explicit values for. Um, for this t and and x. So what if we replace t with a sine t pi t divided by l, and we replace x with a sine t pi x divided by one? Is it easier to compare now? So you see that everything starting from this point is exactly the same. You good? So we have some crazy constants in front different, but in fact, second derivative or time 
in second derivative over space bring up the same answer. This is a really great observation. So right now you come to the point of truth where you guys will derive an equation for that will generate waves. So we need to record that they are equal to each other. So if we um, multiply each side by appropriate factor to get rid of, like if you multiply both sides of, uh, of this equation by tau over 2 pi squared, then it will disappear on this part. And if you multiply this equation by lambda over 2 pi squared, it will disappear from, from the right side, correct? And then we can establish the equality. So please try to write it down in your notebooks and see, and then correct me if I do it uh, in the wrong way. equals to tau over the two pi squared dt over d t squared of f. This one appears from here, this one appears from there. Objections? Do you have well it is not the last one, we can simplify it a little bit more, but would you agree that it, it uh, makes sense? Yes. Um, probably too long in this place. Do I have your permission to erase everything? Good. Maybe everything except this last equation. So we can cancel 2 pi here and there because same power, same like denominator. And then we can divide both equations by tau squared. Divide by tau squared. Then we have lambda or tau squared d2 dx squared f d2 dt squared f that's t that's t by the way it's already time to celebrate you do have an equation that will generate waves we just work on little improvements to have it looking nice What is the dimension of uh, wavelength? Distance? Yes, Years. like meters, feet, miles, parsecs. <laughs> oh, what's the um, units of period? One of the period, One of the period, not frequency, period. Seconds per meter. Period. Just time. Um, seconds. Oh, yes, time. Seconds. Seconds. Yeah. Then um, this one is. How will you say position? Or distance. Distance. In this time. What is distance over time? Based on your. Uh, probably it's not high school, it's middle school. Or just common sense. Miles per hour. Yes. Velocity. Velocity of whom? Or velocity of what? Wave. 
Yes. So D squared diversity of weight times second derivative for space equals second derivative over time. So it's wave equation. So it would be too much and too demanding for us to um, go into solutions of this equation right now. I'm just switching back to the slide. But <clears throat> if you would have enough time or uh, enough money to hire a professional mathematician, solution of, of this wave equation always give waves. Not only cosine waves, not only waves of a given uh, frequency or given period. It gives more general waves, uh, including wave packets, superpositions of several waves, traveling waves, but uh, this is a big record in uh, our intellectual development. The important feature of any object where one can see waves is that unlikely like uh, pieces of whatever wood, iron in our macroscopic uh, everyday intuition, these objects have infinite number of degrees of freedom because you need to see elongation at each point of space. Like if it is surface of water, it elongates a little bit from equilibrium up and down. The best, the simplest way is the string on musical instrument, like violin or, or guitar. So it, it has, it is able to shape, to show complicated shapes. Although typically it shows very simple harmonics, but generally wave equation can give some uh, exotic shapes. Good. You are very good. You are good. So, what's the connection to electrons? Uh, I want to learn how to time manage. Okay, five minutes. Is there a person in the room who never watched TV? Okay, we all are in modern civilization. Is there a person in the room who never watched flat screen TV. No, no uh, let's uh, formulate ever. Did any of you watch non flat screen TV? Good, good. So, how does it work? I mean, not as users, but if you uh, like uh, traveling time uh, thousand years backwards and you want to redesign the, the TV. So first, it is a kinest like a big glass tube with the screen is front. Area. Second, there is vacuum inside, and third, there is a gun, electron gun, the device that um, emit electrons, and they approach the screen. When the electrons approach the screen, it flashes because of scintillation. And then there is additional technology how to direct it to different points on the screen and how to change intensity. But basically it's uh, flashes or non-flashes at different points and then gives us a movie or whatever. So gun, and then uh, there are ways to elongate and then there are flashes. Good. Now, uh, double slit experiment, what is it? Yes. Dots. Yes. You are talking about double slit experiment for light waves, like interferometry. But one can make the same double slit experiment for a lot. If you have technology to redesign the old fashioned TV device, and instead of allowing this uh, electron ray to hit any point, you know, make a 
screen inside that you and make two holes or two things <coughs> there. Then intuitively one would expect that electrons will go one way and flashes in one position. And if there is a second hole, it will flash in another position. But if one makes this experiment very carefully in dark room, one will observe that something happens in between. And this will be a manifestation of um, wake nature of Earth. What are atoms? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a bit of <laughs> changing the gear, but um, you know, before 20th century, 19th century, there were models. No one was uh, objecting positive and negative charges, but there was a there was a um, raising pi model of atom. So it's like homogeneous uh, positive charge with electrons like raisins sticked around from inside. But it was given wrong results for for many experiments. And uh, historically, the Bohr model told that uh, it was the first one who reproduced the spectra. The discrete nature of spectrum, and give raise hands if you never heard about Bohr model. Okay, you heard about it. So um, it was an idea that electrons cannot stand in a fixed space; they always move, and they move on orbits, and um, and they move on orbits only with selected values of velocity, distance, or better say, angular momentum. Very discrete values. We are going to look on uh, this aspect once again and connect it with our knowledge of the wave equation. So here is So, we are coming to the end of the time for today, but uh, you can think about Bohr models, about some waves going in circular orbitals, and what is important that these waves of something come to the same phase upon making a full circle. Waves of something make a full circle and come to the same phase. And if we do not have the integer number of cycles, then something crazy is happening. So those are good ball orbitals and those are bad orbitals. See, you cannot associate, while looking on, on these images, you can speak, this is like P orbital, this is uh, maybe like F orbital, something like this, but here you cannot you can associate this shape with anything. If there are no integer number of um, pure rotations of some object of unknown nature, then one gets a mess. This is uh, something to think about over the weekend. Thank you much for coming and looking forward to seeing you on Monday 11 at the same time.